Let's talk a little about the Motorola Devour software. We've got Android 1.6 and it features Motorola's custom version of Android called Moto Blur. And this has been on other phones before like the Click. And just as a brief overview, uh, what it does is can, tries to consolidate all your social networking and messages with the outside world, whether it's work, friends, whoever, and put them in a few unique select spots so you don't have to check all these different websites and, and methods. So um, it really comes with three main elements. Uh, the first element is over on the left, we've got our, uh, it's called happenings. And these are little things that happen. Uh, there, you know, your friend makes a Facebook update or some, your friend makes a tweet, someone you're following. So it's little blips on your social radar that you don't really need to get all of them. It's just um, you want to see what, you know, the latest people are saying. And you can click that and scroll through here and see what different people are saying. And you, this is Fandroid's Twitter uh, account and you can see Cyanogen's on there. So uh, that's happenings. And then you've also got messages. And those are more, those are like emails that you're getting or text messages, more direct person to person communication. Uh, and at the top, of course, we've got the status update, and you can quickly update your spat status across a number of different uh, websites. So I could say doing uh, devour, oopsie, devour review. And then I can choose where I want to update it. I could choose it right now. I only have Facebook and Twitter in here. and But I can just select both. both, And then do go ahead and post. And now that will go ahead and post that on my Facebook and my Twitter. Now there are other accounts that you can add. And that's as simple as going to menu and settings. And you can see in here there should be accounts. And they've, they have a bunch of different accounts that you can use. Now, I've got my Blur account, uh, Facebook, G Gmail, uh, Twitter, and Yahoo. But you can also add, there's MySpace in there. Uh, there is the other email, um, you know, Pop3 email, Corporate Sync, Picasa, Photo Bucket. And I'm sure they're probably going to be adding different services as time goes on to Moto Blur. A couple other cool widgets for Moto Blur are the weather widget is one. And right now I'm in Baltimore, it's light rain, a couple more degrees and it would be snowing. But this four day forecast down here is great. I love the view of this and you can go ahead and press extended forecast there and it will shoot you over to the web to AccuWeather.com for the extended forecast. And you could choose multiple cities here. So I have Beijing in here also and just slide over so you know if you're going on vacation or you just like to see what weather is other you know other places in the world or you want to put your family and friends locations in there uh, it's really cool really nice looking uh, looking view i wish they had a geolocation option that just told you what the weather is where you are at that given second but uh, i haven't found it. it doesn't seem like you can do that and uh, but it is pretty easy to just go ahead and add uh, you know the locations that you'd like so if you just go to widgets and you just choose the weather widget and you can just go ahead and add cities and search them by name but the other cool widget is the news widget which has it's pretty much an RSS feed but they pre-package different news sources in there for you so I'm gonna go ahead and select news and you're gonna add feed so you can add bundles which is a collection of different stuff around topics um, you can look at specific feeds from specific places. I could add Fox Sports, for example, to my feed. Let's add uh, NFL. So I'm going to subscribe to that. And then I'm going to add, let's add a bundle here that's news with dig and stuff. And I can choose what I want to include and what I don't. Uh, don't want to include USA Today or dig just do MSNBC and Reuters and then let's add one more uh, and you can choose an actual RSS feed from a website. So now so. here I am looking at the news widget with the custom news sources that I put in there and see something that interests me go ahead and read it and you know read the little overview I can click the green arrow or the title to actually get shot off to the website there and read that specific article or I can flick through and read the other stories and this is really cool it's like a custom RSS feed reader 
for Android that's built into Moto Blur, and I really actually like this feature. So Moto Blur is kind of growing on me a little bit. Um, at first, I thought it was overkill. I'd still like to be able to do some more customizations, but like with the size of these widgets uh, and control a little more. But I, I think Moto Blur is doing a pretty good job. And hey, if you don't like Moto Blur, just take it off your phone. Moto Blur isn't a reason not to get a phone. Like the Devour, if you really like the Devour, but you don't like Moto Blur, you really shouldn't be complaining about it. Let me just show you how easy it is to take Moto Blur off of a Moto Blur device. Ready? Now there you go. So being on Verizon Wireless, the Devour also comes with a bunch of Verizon apps like VZ Navigator, Vcast. As far as VZ Navigator goes, it costs $9.99 a month. You're already paying for a $30 data plan. And Google Maps has now Google Navigate. So I would just take VZ Navigator and put it right there in the trash can and use Maps. Now you can see here, I'm, uh, I've got Centennial Park. You'll notice in the camera review, I take a bunch of pictures there and stuff. So I use Navigate to get there, and it might not work now because I'm indoors, uh, and I probably won't be able to get a GPS signal. But the point, and you can see now, I install. Make sure you install the update of Google Maps in the market because this has got like the night mode now since it is ooh, two in the morning. But I was a little worried about the 3.1 inch screen and navigation but it seemed to work fine especially with the audible turn-by-turn -turn directions they give you it's pretty easy uh, and it's great I mean being free in addition you know you're paying the data plan but it comes along with that so I just recommend using regular old Google navigate and I said regular old and it's actually very regular new and it's really good so definitely use Google navigate so on the side of the phone, below the volume rockers, there's this voice activation key, which I think is great. Send text message to 8675309. Yes, I did. I'm a little surprised it didn't just say it was Jenny, but what can you do? Anyways, this is a great, uh, a great tool. Also, above these touch-sensitive screens are the call button, contacts button, and the app drawer that are always here no matter which screen you slide to. So that's really convenient um, because obviously it's a phone, you're going to want to be making calls a lot. So you can just pull that up right away or pull your app drawer up no matter where you are and look at all the apps that you have or check out your contacts. So. Um, that's pretty convenient and I like that it's on the touch screen. Alright, so I just want to sum up with a quick positive, quick negative, something I'm indifferent about that kind of bothers me, and then a conclusion. So, first of all, positive, it's snappy. I mean, it's not the strongest processor in the world, uh, but it works pretty well. It doesn't lag. Uh, the, the swipes are quickly, the swipes are quick. It opens applications nicely and briskly. It interacts. It's just it's smooth and it works well so they've done a good job incorporating everything and getting it all to work well together so uh, it I like the swiftness of it something I don't like about it is this optical little d-pad this thing's gonna be the death of me I don't like d-pads to begin with but this one it doesn't work well between the moto blur elements sometimes it doesn't seem to respond like right now uh, it's just, it, I don't it just doesn't seem to work well. I don't like it. Uh, and the same thing goes for when you're on the web trying to scroll through links. And the same goes when you've got the keyboard open too. My indifference is Android 1.6. And everybody seems to be saying, oh, it's not the latest Android. It's not 2.0. It's not 2.1. It's already behind when it launches. And personally, I don't think it really matters. If you're the person that really has to have 2.0, 2.1 you're going to be buying the droid or the nexus or the thing that's out now that's brand new and i don't think the devourers really target those at those people i know that motorola has said they'll be upgrading the devour to 2.x uh, in the future so it will be coming but 
for the average consumer, 1.6 is plenty good. And it also has some stuff on there like, you know, Google Navigation, which only up until now, you know, the 2.0 devices have had. People are going to knock it and say, you know, it's 1.6, it's so outdated. But I don't think it's really not that outdated to the regular customer who can still go into Android Market, download a ton of applications, you know, still be doing all these things they could never do with their phone. So, and in conclusion, I think about the software is Moto Blur, I think, has done a good job. Uh, they, they've updated their things. It's not going to be for everybody. Either you're going to like Moto Blur or you're not going to like Moto Blur or you're going to like parts of it and not like other parts of it. But... You know what? At the end of the day, if you don't like Moto Blur, you can take it off your phone. And I said that before. And I, let's—I'll show you. Here you go. Take it off. You don't like it? Take it off.